Hi guys, welcome to another video from Crafty Build Studios. Today we're going to continue on with our daily reps with Post Clock Plus. The idea behind these sessions is pretty simple. We just go through a hand, use our decisioning process to uh, break down the hand, you know, analyze and arrive at a decision that is going to be as close to the solver as possible. Obviously, in uh, in real games, you would be adjusting to player pool and tendencies. But this is this is how we study. This is how we use apps. We use uh, we use the tools that is available to make sure that we understand the concepts behind a solver decision and um, and get better in poker. And uh, yeah, uh, before we jump in, I just wanted to say thank you guys for all the comments, likes, and subscriptions. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, this is uh, it's a good idea to subscribe so you gonna get notified whenever we re release new new video like this one so without further ado let's begin guys all spots so we go into all spots and we can choose between mtt cash and spins obviously uh, for the last two sessions we have done some mtt shallow spots let's do some cash three bet uh, spots today so the most common formation here is small blind versus button so this is what you usually face from um, in like a cash game so let's play from small blind so we are the uh, preflop racer with 11.3 big blinds after a button opened for 2.5 big blinds and called our range looks uh, linear and cap range we have all the aces kings and queens all the suited broadways you know the pairs of suited broadways and whatnot on the other hand buttons preflop range is pretty much capped um, and we do have suited uh, suited connectors, you know, suited broadways, suited A6, and uh, some of suit broadway hands as well. If you want to see us play some other hand and then give us our thought process in analyzing the hand, do mention it in the comments. Uh, so we can we can cover those spots that uh, interest you the most. So make sure to to leave the comments there, guys. So let's begin. So when we when we uh, usually start a spot I would suggest like you go for the simplest of flops available so let's say rainbow unpaired no straight possible boards so these are these are the simplest of the simplest flops so if you're starting to study a new formation new sport go with the simplest and then slowly build up on the complexity of the flops that you're being trained in that way you have a solid base strategy and then you can vary depending upon you know the complexity of the board all right i know i've been rambling for a while but let's begin guys it's a king high board king king of hearts six of diamonds three of clubs we do have ace of clubs queen of clubs against the button in the formation that i said cash three bet small blind versus button uh, the first step in our process is to gather the information what is the pot size the pot size is 23.5 the stack size is 88.75 so so we do have roughly 3.6, 3.7 uh, SPR. So a few bets has to go in uh, before you know before we can get all the money in. So that's uh, that's a sort of information that you need to know for polarization. I'm not saying you need to polarize with this hand, but if you do decide to polarize, you know you need to keep that number in the back of your mind. Hand strength, ace queen of uh, hearts. I usually divide the hand strength into four categories, but three is probably more than enough you know uh, good bad good medium you know strong medium and bad uh, i would say uh, pre-flop this is a strong hand uh, on this board it's still it's still strong mediumish kind of hand it's definitely not a trash one we do have outstream pro you know backdoor uh, backdoor flush draw and overcard you know backdoor straight draw whatnot so we do have things to things going for us with this particular combo so i wouldn't classify it as trash i would classify it as like you know medium you know medium kind of hand um, and on a board like this one king of hearts six of diamonds three of clubs uh, now we need to process the information and then say hey who's got the advantage it's me or the button uh, on a board like this we do have kings we do have aces we do have ace king uh definitely like 
you know the range advantage lies in us but they do have sixes and threes i'm not sure whether we do have sixes let's check yeah we do have sixes though so and we do have we don't have a six seated but we do have sixes uh so uh, i would say we do we have a clear range advantage and we do have clear nut advantage and we do have the old face as well so on a board like this which is very static king high board with range advantage and nut advantage uh there's no need for range splits we just do range betting uh so uh, when, before we act, the one question that I'm going to ask is, what's the reason that we are doing the action that we choose to? For example, in this case, we decide to do range bet. Why do we do so? So uh, the range bet accomplishes a number of things. Obviously, for uh, hands like you know, ice king, king queen, king jack, uh, even with pocket sixes, pocket kings, uh, it accomplishes the goal of building up the pot. And it also conceals the information that, that we are range betting. I mean, it doesn't conceal information. If we do range bet, we choose a smaller sizing, uh, which means he knows that we are range betting. And also to get the fold equity, like he has a lot of trash in his hand. And for a hand like Ace of Clubs, Queen of Clubs, it might be happier to win the pot then and there. So uh, that's my reason. Uh, let's go range betting. And then he, he definitely folds. And... Uh, and this is something that you guys should not go and click next pot and just keep on playing. I would say like explore these options. So in these options, uh, obviously ace of clubs, queen of clubs mixes between uh, bet small, bet big and check. So we thought it's going to be range bet, but apparently, apparently it mixes uh, some of the other options to a decent amount of time. So you can click on any one of those to go into detailed range split screen guys. So if I click on this one and it goes into the range split screen and you guys can see that it checks 11% of the time bets the overall range. So this, this percentage over here is the overall range. Um, checking 11% of the time, betting big 17% of the time and betting small 72% of the time. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just approximating uh, rounding off the numbers here. So as you guys can see, King Queen is betting big, Ace five suited is betting big, and the rest of them, most of the time, it's just betting, betting small. So I would classify, yeah, there are these are solver nuances to perfectly balance between available uh, bet sizing. But I would say like range betting here is not a mistake. Probably it won't affect, you know, it won't be, it won't result in my a major ev loss here as you guys can see if you click on the ev explorer it brings up this chart where you can actually see how the range is distributed the red line is out of position green line is in position so out of position has a clear range advantage overall from the top to bottom yes there is some you know it's running close towards you know 40 to 50 percent equity and also there is some some running close on the top as well because they do have pocket sixes and we do have pocket sixes too. So, so yeah, there are there are some there are some overlaps, but overall, uh, rate it's a clear range advantage. It's a clear nut advantage as well. As you guys can see in the in the top portion, we are you know we do have kings. Uh, so that's that's basically pushes pushes it up up uh, above the in positions range. You can also look at the pie chart and. Um, see how uh, the hands are distributed on a hand like king six x uh you guys can see the trash is somewhat equivalent like 32 percent 33 percent uh but the weak hands uh in position has a lot of weak hands as opposed to out of positions uh, and we do have as i said like we do have a clear nut advantage like 27 percent of our range is strong as opposed to only 16 percent being strong here so uh, that's exactly why we are betting so much and then yeah choosing a range bet is is uh, is what is the way to go uh, there's no checking range I would love to see uh, love to show you guys uh, some range split so let's go play another hand okay uh, and then see where uh, if we can if we can do some range splits again it's an ace high board uh, similar concepts apply. I don't want to go through the SPR again because it's the same thing. Uh, Ace Jack, it's a pretty good hand pre-flop, and now it's it's in the it's in the strong portion of our range. And the incentive of a strong portion of a range is pretty simple: is to build the pot and, uh, of course, to protect our checking range. Uh, here, uh, because we have a clear range advantage, not advantage, you know the same things that we talked 
before a range bet is what I would prefer and and it falls and if you and if you and if you look at this board again um, you would see <laughs> a king high board at least chooses a bigger sizing whereas an ace high board doesn't have that much uh, bigger sizing uh, before if you have remembered like the king the king queen was uh, choosing a bigger sizing on a king high board whereas on ace high board there is no other high card to come it just chooses the range betting overall and again have a look at the uh, graphs just for sanity check to make sure that again uh, to see what your understanding is correct the range advantage is clear except for some overlapping and clearly we do have the net advantage as well so and the pie chart should be similar as well it's very very similar so so now now you guys can see like a clear pattern emerging by just viewing a couple of hands imagine doing this daily basis and then getting exposed to different boats and then uh, you know by playing you are strategizing your game it's amazing what technology can do to you all right queen of hearts ten of diamonds two of clubs we do have pocket aids uh, is this a board where we should be splitting so the SPR the stack size it's all the same the hand strength pocket aids is a pretty good hand uh, on a queen 10 two board to rainbow board we pocket aids now um, it's 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 kind of in the upper middle-ish kind of portion um, buttons still have some broad base and uh, good queen X and whatnot so he yes he has some trash but he also uh, connect well with the board as well so I don't think this board is an automatic you know range betting kind of board um, so we have to split okay so if you do have to split, uh, what are the what are the what are the best hands we have? Like for example, queens, kings, aces, uh, pocket tens. Uh, you know, uh, so those are all good hands. And some of the draws includes king jack, ace king. You know, eight nine, uh, jack eight, jack nine. You know, all those all those uh, all those hands are all those hands are draws and you know uh, have incentives to bet and get more money in the pot. And there are hands like, you know, pocket eights, which wants to realize, you know, uh, he just wants to go check, check, pot control, and then, and then uh, get to, get to the river. It could be, you know, we could bet once on this, uh, on this to get some fold equity, but pocket eights, I would probably check. Let's see. Oh, pop, pop, pop. We do get an instant feedback here. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed it. So this is an instant feedback bar on the top. And uh, and then uh, you, you have seen in the previous hand that I've made green decision, which is perfect. But as now when I just say check, um, it gave me in yellow, which means which means this is an okay decision. So on a seven of club stance, after after it goes check check. Okay, what does check check means? Um, if he does have some sort of draws, if he does, someone wants to protect some of his showdown driven hands. Uh, I mean, if he wants to protect some hands that 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 has shut on value, button would have bet uh, at least something. Now, when he goes check check uh, on a seven of clubs turns, I think we we still clearly maintain the uh, maintain the advantage, I would say, and then we should start betting, right? I think we should um, let's check check. We should be betting. He calls. Uh, jack of clubs, you know, completes completes a uh, number of draws. Eight of clubs is good here from a blocker perspective because we do block, you know, eight nines. Uh, I mean, uh, eights is probably good because we do block eight nine suited. We do block, you know, uh, we do block some of the club draws that he has. But now his uh, his range now becomes pretty much a showdown <laughs> driven, you know, value. So do we need to can do we need to change this? Uh, Aids, pocket aids into a bluff. Maybe, maybe not. I'm just gonna check here. Uh, the question, here, the the reason behind this is to just to realize. Okay. All right. So checking is good. Uh, checking on the turn is probably good. So we should once we start checking, we should we should stick to our. Um, stick to our theory like in terms of we want to pot control we want to realize and then keep checking is, is what the solver is suggesting that's fine that's fine so we need to see why it wants to bet small on a board like this one 
So, oof. so Queen 10 deuce rainbow is 90% betting small and a very tad person it's betting big and then <laughs> checking only 1.7% of the time. So why is that? So clearly, clearly what, what I said was wrong. So I, I thought the villain has significant interaction to the board and thereby we need to protect our checking range. We can't bet everything, uh, everything, uh, and that's why, and that's why, that's why I kind of choose to check. But solver uh, says otherwise, so we need to find out why. So if this is a major mistake, then we need to find out why. So this is this is where we can use the tools. So we can click on the EV Equity Explorer, which goes and gets the range distribution, and there, and there it is. Why? <laughs> so even in the Ace High board and King High board. Uh, we as the preflop aggressor out of position had some overlaps with the in position player. But now look at that. We do have clear range advantage and clear nut advantage overall. And this is the mistake I made. And this is something that I'm going to take away and note down and then correct my mistake uh, for the next time. Let's have a look at the pie chart. 20% trash versus 44% trash and we have 20% strong hand and 24% good hand. So look at the 44% of our hands on this board is either strong or good, as opposed to only like 28% of the range, uh, villain's range uh, being strong and good. And this is a clear winner. Like this is like, as you guys can see, uh, out of position has a clear advantage and that's why it's betting so much and it's using a smaller position and then there's no need to have a checking range. There you go, guys. I think we just used a tool, played a couple of hands, find a leak in my, find a, find a thing that I can take away, and I'm gonna use it in my games next time when I play. So this is, this is, probably, uh, this is probably a quick way to show you guys how you can use a simple, simple process that you can funnel through to make sound, solid decisions, and also use the apps and different tools that we, that we give you and uh, how you can how you can study effectively and then you know you know maximize your study time like we spent what like 15 minutes and we already found that you know that that don't look at your hand strength but look at your range strength on a board like this and then go for it if you're uh, if you're not willing to do that then that's a major mistake and you have to correct it so yeah so that's it for today guys we will be as i said we will be producing more of these content in future if you do again like our videos make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you get notified whenever we do a video and if you do want to play some other uh, spots a specific formation then yeah then um, uh, let us know in the comments guys and i will uh, try to cover it in the future videos thanks for listening guys take care peace